live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Inforum DC 2018. Brought to you by Infor. And good afternoon, or I guess at least Eastern time, good afternoon. We're in Washington, D.C., theCUBE live here at Informa 18. We're at the Washington, uh, D.C. Convention Center, along with Dave Vellante, I'm John Walls. It's a pleasure to welcome Nunzio Esposito, who's the VP and Head of hey, Experience at Infor, and you can tell us the coolest guy in the room right now, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nunzio, good to see you. Yep. Thanks for joining us, oh, we thank appreciate you. that. Thank you for asking. Uh, so, so you head up, uh, as part of, of your, your primary responsibility, the in-house creative agency. Yep. Hook and loop. Um, why, first off, let's just deal with, with design from an approach standpoint, why is design so important to N4 to have its own in-house agency? Um, well, I mean, we have amazing capabilities and a lot of, and those capabilities really differentiate us against our competitive set. But what ends up happening is that our end users essentially want to have a more enjoyable, more satisfying experience through their work. So the reason why design is extremely important to Infor is because through design, we get to do things like provide efficiency through workflows. We get to do things like create a design system that helps to scale and empower and enable our development teams to pick up UX best practices and uh, UI assets so that they can build quicker or uh, open sourcing those kind of capabilities to be able to empower our partners and our customers to build apps with kind of a standard code base. Um, so I would tell you that the reason why design is so important is because we look at things from a very macro view strategically. Design is very holistic, it's problem solving. Um, and it's taking the best of some of design's key attributes of modernizing the UI, being able to uh, apply design thinking to understand kind of what the business value uh, needs to come out of the system or the solution that's put in play, um, and how that mutually uh, creates a beneficial kind of uh, delivery mechanism to each user that they're doing their work. Uh, and also looking at kind of just the raw, sheer amount, vast uh, assets that we have from uh, data, and being able to find ways uh, to essentially come up with solutions that you know, businesses today really need, and it's it's a very competitive landscape. Um, and what best to have a designer be able to try to solve hmm. some of your business application uh, needs? And and does it change uh, dependent upon the vertical in which you're working? So I mean, those have to be considerations mm -hmm. too, and the environment, right? If you're mm -hmm. doing mobile, if you're going to be at the desktop, you're going to be yep. on a laptop or yep. iPad, whatever. All that factors into that. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, it is interesting. I mean, you know, part of Infor strategy has always been to, you know, have industry focused uh, cloud suites. Um, and from a design perspective for us, we do tend to see patterns. So it depends on uh, user roles, um, kind of access points. You talked about devices. Uh, so we see the use of device in, say, healthcare industry very different, say, than to the use of a device in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. But uh, mobile is really starting to kind of like blur those lines. Uh, and you brought up something that was part of our mobile strategy uh, internal that was kind of finished out in October of 2017, which is essentially what we call mobility in, in context. So context is very important. Um, knowing situationally where a user is in a moment so that they can, from one moment, work with, say, some portal and that portal may be a laptop to a, uh, say an iPhone, or even just an Alexa device, and be able to understand where they are, allow them to continue on in that workflow, and make sure that it's integrated, it, it's smooth, and it's like direct and to the point. So um, that's what has kind of transpired through the evolution of Hook and Loop, because design has evolved, um, and it's bigger than just modernizing our user interfaces uh, here at Infor. So when we first uh, heard about uh, Hook and Loop, it was, f it was through Infor, it was the early part of this decade. Uh, mobile was only five or six years old, I mean, smartphones yep. at, at the time, so it was early days. You guys were first, certainly of all the major mm -hmm. software company, enterprise software companies, to focus on that. Now, subsequently, we hear, I mean, you've, and you always heard a lot about UI, mm -hmm. UX, uh, subsequently, now, more, much more recently, we're hearing much more around design. You're seeing, you know, you go to conferences like ServiceNow and they're focusing on this stuff and you guys have always been there. <laughs> What's the difference between UX, UI and sort of design at the core? Yeah, sure. I mean, 
I think it's sometimes the lines are blurred, right? And it depends on the industry and it depends on uh, where you're speaking as far as when you say user experience design or if you say just design in general. So I'm going to just take two steps back. The reason why I didn't go for head of design at Hook and Loop was just because design means has a certain definition here at Infor. We are obviously an enterprise, it's very vast, it's extremely broad, and at that point, each, say, of our major constituents, product management, it could be a product development, it could be a customer, they have different mental models on what design means. So we wanted to go with something that was a little more elusive, right, so ahead of experience, but essentially now through our evolution in our sixth year, we're really focused on product experience. So what that means is, taking kind of all of the learnings that we've had in the industry around modernizing UI, so that's essentially the way in which the uh, solution manifests itself, how it looks, mm -hmm. and the best of user experience, essentially, what is the flow? What are the click states? How can we provide efficiency in form fields? But now you bring in AI, and that obviously puts a different dimension on that process. Um, but when it kind of all comes together, it's really just about making a strategic call on what the solution needs to be able to satisfy, all the different configurations in which uh, it needs to account for, and then how to package that in a very lightweight manner. Uh, so it's almost to the point that a company or a user doesn't need any instructional information in how to use it. And that's always been a goal at Hook and Loop. Uh, through the six year journey, uh, strategically, even with some prior leadership, uh, there was a very amazing strategic call to focus on a more mobile-first initiative. And a mobile-first that brought uh, forward kind of all the responsive uh, web behaviors to our applications. So that's great, because that just essentially means that on any device, the application will conform, will render, uh, to kind of provide uh, the best usability that it can. Uh, as we're evolving, though, we're realizing that the future of work, and I mentioned this uh, to the analysts yesterday, the future of work, which is now post-millennial, and I know it sounds crazy because I think we're all still uh, seeing millennials in our workforce and trying to uh, reconfigure, figure out what the company culture is, the purpose is, uh, and how business solutions help to support that. But uh, the article in the New York Times talked about iGen, and you know the theme at, in Forum here is all about human potential. Well, in the iGen uh, generation, it's all about like the personal. Uh, aspects of the way in which they communicate, the way they do work, the way they have social gatherings. Um, and I found it very profound because that essentially really supports what the vision of Hook and Loop is now uh, in this era, which is the personal enterprise. And there's nothing more personal than the device that we choose on a daily level, which is the mobile device. So at that point, it's extremely innate. Um, and uh, you know, it definitely kind of personifies who we are in our digital world, our digital selves. And because it actually has all this tons of capability that's packed in it, what ends up happening is it's not about kind of the nine to five anymore. And I think you guys and myself, we all know that. Um, we're, getting, we're getting notifications and communication to say a loved one or some kind of social event that's going on and then getting pinged through some kind of communication or notification of work that we have like jobs to do. There's things that have to get done. So it moves from work-life balance to a work-life blend. And for our enterprise, and through kind of, I think, the investment that we've done with design, that allows us at Hook and Loop to really push the boundaries of user experience and think about the balance of all of those to kind of give our customers only, always only exactly what the user needs right now. And that's been our new mantra um, where we've kind of uh, strategically pivoted, evolved, uh, and been essentially looking at our principles and re-looking at our work given all this investment in our capabilities. And we heard this morning in the keynotes, you're basically infusing AI in, into your applications in, in an effort to create better outcomes, giving yep. users advice as to how they maybe could have done things differently, maybe tracking some KPIs and giving feedback to the, the user so that they can have better outcomes. How does AI, from a design standpoint, change the way in which you have to think about presenting data and information yeah. to the user and not being you know, intrusive uh, but being helpful. Yeah, I could probably talk about that for like, probably like the next two to five hours, but um, <clears throat> reality is there's different versions or flavors of AI. So some of it could be more uh, back-end processes, 
like you alluded to, and presenting, say, best potential outcomes that a user, uh, or paths that the user can navigate or select or go down. Um, one thing that we saw from a design perspective is the fact that you don't want to just present the recommendation. You don't want to lose the human factor. You have to establish trust uh, with AI over time. So in just, in just saying, hey, I got that, or I got that done, or here's the best KPI to use, you want to still uh, have a system that can offer up why and be able to uh, kind of promote choice. A user doesn't want to feel essentially uh, controlled. They want the system to be able to uh, make them feel like they're in control. So those are some nuances there. Uh, when it gets into kind of the more conversational aspects of AI, you know, and I'm going well beyond kind of chatbots, having conversations and having it kind of uh, leverage some of our search capabilities, find business objects and promote it, uh, say, through our GUI. Um, conversations get intense. And why I say intense, it's some of the terminology we use at Hook and Loop. But that's just because utterances and variancy in the way in which we communicate are complex. You might say, OK, and I might say, yeah. You might say, I am on it, and I might say, Yo, I'm doing that. And just through. That's exactly right, as yeah, a matter of well, fact. That's exactly what I mean. I wasn't trying to say this or that. I wasn't trying to say this or that. But they all mean the same thing, or in different contexts, or whatever the inquiry was. We have to understand that kind of user intent and be able to map all those correlations. So it's not so easy as just saying, hey, we have AI and we'll put it into play. And from a design perspective, the last thing we want to do is ever alienate a user. So, and frustrate a user. Yeah, and frustrate a user, exactly. So, you know, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And, um, you know, we really need to think strategically in a way in which we ultimately empower a user. So, when I say user, we're saying an Infor, you know, customer's employee or an Infor's customer, customer. Um, so, it's a very interesting uh, strategic place that we, we, we sit within Infor and our product development teams. You know, you're talking about user experience um, and best practices, so you can, obviously there are some general trends or general concepts. What do you find out though amongst you know, your clients and, and, and your user base maybe that offers additional insight or is giving you maybe um, a little sneak peek about something that you are uniquely discovering, if you could talk about Oh uh, Yeah, that. sure. I mean, I think uh, as we evolved kind of our business model uh, this year and our services, I think one of the things that we've learned over the years is that like we're no subject matter experts like at all. So it's kind of like, well, how do we get this information? How can we learn more? How can we provide or satisfy or create uh, solutions that satisfy these certain pain points? So what we ended up doing is, you know, we, I hear this from my team constantly. It's like, who's the customer or who's the user? And we need personas and we need to understand the journey maps. And we lose sight of some of the more internal mechanisms that we have that really kind of give us that information. So we've, over the last few months, have gotten access to Infor Concierge, which is a tool that Infor created for our customers to be able to kind of understand what's new in the product, um, if they have any product uh, enhancement requests, issues uh, that they would love to see, bugs, defects. They're finding it, their Infor is working really well in creating kind of a two-way conversation. Well, what best to have design uh, team, which you know, product experience team, be able to be able to like have access to all that information, mm -hmm. be able to comb and sift through it. So we're learning kind of what the customer and the user wants, but they're participating in that. So it's it's a really interesting orchestration or concert. And then on the flip side, we have a ton of subject matter experts. So and that goes well beyond just our solution uh, industry solution um, architects. This goes into like our sales teams or our solution consultants or our channel partners. So strategically over these last six to eight months, I think what we have uncovered is that like we have a lot of support and there's like ways for us to make decisions quicker and um, be able to test or have successes or failures in a very like small confined uh, box, so to speak, uh, so that we make decisions that don't necessarily create massive ramifications in the enterprise, but get us to kind of uh, create uh, value uh, quicker in a more uh, kind of sizable chunk and deployment mechanism. So I think the biggest thing that we've uncovered is the fact that not only do we have a lot of talent, but we have a lot of amazing bright ideas. And that is why we moved from an in-house design agency to product experience, because essentially Infor has grown and, in, and, and our team, is everyone's becoming a designer. 
-hmm. And that's what you want. You want to go from a design organization, which was the goal in 2012, to now in 2017, 2018, and, and where we're headed, to move from a design org to a design culture. And I think that's what is going to definitely get Infor to differentiate against its competitive landscape. Because one of the problems with design is oftentimes the, the design, the ideal design, there's a gap between that and the actual functionality of the product. And then you end up with this kind of hybrid. Uh, does some of the design intent mm -hmm. matches the, the outcome, but then the functionality is sort of becomes roadmap. Yeah, and a lot of that was happening, I think, because we were going through an evolution. Um, what we really, what we noticed is we need to move design closer to our uh, product development teams in Hyderabad, Manila. You know, we have, I mean, development's getting done all over the globe. So what we did was we wanted to ensure that UX practitioners were, you know, sitting side by side with our development teams for, so that in a moment's time they can have a conversation, quickly make a decision, and obviously just continue on their way. Uh, another piece, though, is what is the right balance between having uh, massive amounts of engineering capacity to, say, uh, a designer that's in, in partnership with them? So we started practicing and growing our team to be less focused on some of the more uh, baseline uh, design capabilities, and we brought in uh, some really smart and talented engineers that understand design, find ways to translate it. And we're doing that kind of translation right now in building native uh, mobile applications uh, inside of Hook and Loop. And that gives us a mechanism to prove out our work uh, understand some of our decisions, uh, get kind of the feasibility more done up front, so that when we make strategic calls or we want to scale from there, we, we start to uh, minimize the gap between wouldn't this be amazing if it could render or do this to, oh God, we just did like patchwork or it was a quill <laughs> that we created to, to get it done. We want to we wanna bridge that gap and get closer and closer to what the original concept or the idea was. So you announced uh, uh, one of those apps this week. Yeah, right, that was super excited. That. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know, b leveraging the best of human-centered design, I can't mention the customer's name given uh, NDA, but we did work with a very large consulting firm uh, that had 18,000 users, and they're kind of road warriors. So uh, strategically working with our C-suite, we're focusing on more agnostic solutions and then scale to more industry-focused solutions. Uh, so this is in expense management, but we needed something that was like insanely high consumer grade, so you know, really driven by usability, but offered more of the baseline utility. So uh, leveraging the capabilities of XM, this was all kind of like the road warrior. I just need to capture, you know, capture my receipt, potentially build a queue, wait till my credit card feeds in uh, these data points, my expenses, match these expenses, submit a report, and like, can I just get back on my day? Because we all hate doing that. So the app that we just released, it's uh, available in Apple iTunes, uh, the Apple Store today. Uh, it's called Infor Expense. It acts as a companion to Infor Expense Management. We say companion because if you're an Infor Expense uh, Management customer today, you have access to it. Um, and it really is a mechanism to kind of promote the best of what Hook and Loop is trying to scale uh, and continues to scale inside of Infor. Um, at the same time, it's a playground for us. It's a playground for us to test new capabilities, leverage capabilities that are on the device, you know, evolve our design patterns and our UI assets so that we kind of always stay at the tip of the spear. And that's essentially where Hook and Loop sets for Infor from a product strategy perspective. Well, you make expense reports easy, I'm all for it. All right. Oh, you, me too, right? I got my parking ticket right here. We can start <laughs> as soon as we're done. All right, you want me to Appreciate take a picture of that? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Nuncio, thanks for the time. Oh, awesome. Uh, congratulations. I know you're moving into your second year. It'll be an exciting time for yeah, you, I'm, I'm sure. Excited. Keynote tomorrow, and, uh, right? And you're going to yeah, you lead off tomorrow morning. Yep, I'm opening up day two. But just come. give us real quick sneak peek. What are you going to talk yeah, about? Yeah, I think it's really just all about design's evolution inside of Infor, uh, really setting the stage that Hook and Loop went from an internal kind of creative agency and is really moving towards product experience. So that's product strategy, product thinking, how do we aggregate all of that capability uh, from a data and AI perspective, and then find deployment mechanisms that not only inspire our internal teams, but more importantly, inspire our customers in the market. Good deal. Thank you again cool. for the time. Pleasure. Right, thank you. See you tomorrow morning. Right. Nancio Esposito joining us from Infor. Back with more, we're at Infor 18. We're live in Washington, D.C., and you are watching theCUBE. Oh.